let's see if we can't get this motor put in here. And if you like the looks of this build, hit that subscribe button for me and you can follow along. And believe me, there'll be many more builds in the future. It's never ending down here. When you're putting a motor in a frame, it's not just a matter of bolting it down. You gotta check a few things. And I can already tell that with this motor we're gonna have a few issues because it's just sitting on the uh, motor stand right now. And I can rock it back and forth so it's uh, it's teetering on two motor mount pads uh, that are opposing each other. Even though this motor is matching cases, um, they weren't even, you know, sometimes they weren't right from the factory and they required shimming. So sometimes when you rebuild a motor you can match the cases together and then come in here and mill the uh, motor mount pads flat so that you don't get this. So that obviously wasn't done on this motor. So we're going to have to shim it. No big deal though. Also when you're setting a either a big flat head or a knuckle head in a pan head frame you have to space out this front motor mount. 5 16 uh, spacer plate right there. So that's got to go there before we set the motor in. So now it's sitting in there, so I'm just going to just put some bolts through. Just to be sure that it's in the right spot. So the bolts are just kind of through, but you can see that we're rocking. So we're not making contact here and the opposing one on the right side case on the front. So we're rocking back and forth on those. Also, you want to make sure that the case isn't contacting any of the frame anywhere because that can hang up a motor mount too if your case is bottoming out on the frame making contact. You may have to do a little bit of clearancing. This one's not hitting. It's just rocking on the motor mounts. So the question is, do we shim it this way or this way? Um, generally, when you're shimming a motor, you'll snug down the back and then check the front with feeler gauges and stuff and, and shim the front. Um, but I always like to check the angle of the motor compared to the rest of the drive line. So we've already checked out this frame as far as the motor mount pads on the frame, tranny mount pads. They're all within you know a fraction of a degree of each other, so they're all good. Okay, you can see there that the transmission, oh, it's fluctuating between three and four tenths of a degree. So let's check the motor. I just got a straight edge on that machine surface. That should get us close enough. So here we have two tenths, but it's the wrong direction. So let's bring the motor this way. Right there, we're at six tenths with the motor rocked all the way this way. I'm pulling it towards me. This hardware is one of uh, Colony's kits to bolt this motor down. And I'm just going to snug it down, not super tight. We're just still checking things out here. So now we're looking at the front motor mount, and it looks like we're making good contact here on the left case, but the right case is where our problem is. Now if we were just to tighten that down and not check it, you know, that's when you end up busting motor mounts on cases. So we don't want to do that, and that looks like a pretty sizable gap. Let's see, I'm going to take a few feeler gauges here and see what we're close to. So it looks like we're gapped about 50 thousandths right there. I'm going to put this bolt through, and actually, this colony kit is for, you know, a flathead motor or a knucklehead motor, and, you know, 
those frames, of course, you wouldn't have to use this plate. So actually, these bolts in the front are going to end up being too short. Rear motor mounts, I loosen them back up. And I'm just prying up so I can slide my shims in here. Oh, that one fell out. Okay, got that bolt through. Put our captured nut down in there. Snug that one down. that one down. Okay. Okay. Motor's snug down. Let's double check everything. Four tenths on the transmission. And it looks like we're still at our six tenths on the motor. So two tenths of a degree difference like we had before. Perfect. So I've got my little chain alignment laser on the rear sprocket and you can see that I'm shooting down to the sprocket on the transmission. So that's in a good line. I'll just come in here with a straight edge and check the motor to the transmission. Even gap through here to this nut. If it weren't, you could loosen the motor up and rotate a little bit and get it where you want it. So I say the motor's set, it looks good. I don't have the top motor mount yet, but um, when it goes in, we'll shim it too, because you don't want to force those things either, but that's, that's no problem to do later. Now that this is the hard part, now that this is set up, where the drivetrain is pretty much ready to rock.